Now, since the beginning of the rainy season and the Atlantic hurricane season, we have seen some adverse uh, weather alerts warning us of heavy rainfall and flash flooding in some instances. And here to talk more about how we can prepare for these adverse weather alerts and the rainy season is Senior Disaster Management Coordinator at the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, Mr. Jerry David. Mr. David, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on now. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Now, Mr. David, we know uh, um, at the outset that the ODPM has to assist with, you know, how we get prepared for flooding and for the rainy season. But from the ministry's perspective, how do we assist in that aspect as well? Okay. We started preparing for this uh, Atlantic hurricane season and rainy season uh, about seven weeks ago. That's when the Minister for Rural Development and Local Government, the Honorable Faris Alwari, came to the ministry. And we started the We Clean TT program. Now what that does is it brings together the resources from all the different municipal corporations into one corporation on a weekend, two days. And we, we, we seek to clean that community. We are removing white waste, we are removing uh, debris, household garbage, we are removing cuttings. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because uh, as a mitigation exercise. All of the hundreds of truckloads of debris that we have removed so far is not in the water course. So that means that it allows now for a freer flow of water in the water courses so that there will be what we call disaster risk reduction. We are reducing the risk of all of this, uh, uh, creating uh, uh, such a conundrum that communities are, are overwhelmed uh, when there is a, a, a hydrometeorological event. Mm -hmm. Now, but more than this, it allowed the, the ministry to implement its uh, mutual aid and assistance agreements. The fact that all corporations are coming together uh, to bring its resources into one cooperation, it means that we are assisting each other. Now, when an incident takes place, there's an incident management system we use. It's called ICS, where we, we, we work on planning, logistics, operations, and admin finance. All of this came to, um, came to the fore because we are now testing the ability of corporations to respond uh, to major issues and how we remove debris from, uh, from, from the different municipalities. So Mr. David, let me ask you, is, is the plan only before the rainy season begins or, or, or are you also gonna, going to get involved when we start seeing the rains and people are calling out their regional corporations to assist in that sort of thing? Oh, now, we have not yet completed that, right. part, that program so that this weekend it's a Rima Borough Corporation's mm -hmm. um, time. So that for this weekend, um, the caravan will roll into the Arima Borough Corporation and we're going to be cleaning up that corporation. Mm -hmm. We have last, last weekend, it was uh, Princess Town. Before that, it was Maya Ma Rio Claro. Right. So we, we, but that's in mitigation. Your question is about response. Yes. So that when things happen, uh, the disaster management unit of each municipal corporation brings together the sum total of all the equipment in any municipal corporation and we would respond. And we respond to any uh, hazard that impacts the communities. Now, as it relates to the regional corporations, is it that um, I have, there's like a lot of flooding in the area and I call my regional corporation. Will that particular regional corporation respond or will everybody come together to get in that community to assist? Okay, now, when one corporation is impacted, we say we are at level one. That means that there is enough resources in that corporation together with other state agencies like the fire service, the police, uh, WASA, all the different state agencies. We have enough equipment and resources to respond in that corporation. When, and when two or more corporations are impacted, we say we are at level two. That's when we will activate the Emergency Operations Center at Kent House in Maravilla Road, and the ODPM will partially activate the NEOC. Mm -hmm. And that's where we will start to now coordinate because more than one uh, 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 a corporation has been impacted. And that's when we, we trigger the mutual aid and assistance agreement we have amongst all the, all the different corporations. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned ODPM because I know ODPM before the rainy season, they also have, I believe it's in May, they have their um, National Disaster Preparedness Month. Does the ministry work with ODPM to get this off the ground? Now, they, and let me put that straight, the ODPM leads the effort for the National uh, Disaster Prevention and Preparedness Month. It is a multi-sectoral uh, committee 
appointed by cabinet that works to bring awareness uh, uh, to, to Trinidad and Tobago on all the hazards, you know, and, and disaster risk reduction. We keep saying that all yeah. the time. What we're saying is that um, we may not be able to totally eliminate the effects of all the hazards that impact us uh, during the hurricane season and rainy season, but here what we can reduce the risk. And we have had eight, yeah, tropical waves that have hit us since the hurricane se mm -hmm. the, since uh, the rainy season yes. started. Eight, and I think uh, from this afternoon is the ninth. <laughs> so what are these uh, uh, tropical waves uh, teaching us? What, what are the lessons we learned? Uh, what we have been impacted by, by these tropical waves, high winds. And yeah. we are talking about 15 minutes alone, you know, of fierce, sharp, high winds. In one park in Dingo Martin, six trees fell. Mm. And throughout the country, we have been seeing that trees have been, top, have been just toppling over and falling. So that's one of the hazards that the tropical waves is showing us is high winds. You remember this weekend, we had a, a roof. That, that was blown off. And that is yes. the superstructure of the roof. Yes. Just came off the house and fell into the roadway. Now that speaks to how we are building our roofs. Mm. It means that there needs to be emphasis placed on how we do that ring beam, that, you know, when we put in the box in and we... To reinforce it. Yes. yes. It yes. means that those individuals are not paying attention, and that was a uh, uh, pull-in. Mm. There are these C-pullings and Z-pullings that they use to construct the roof. And then we have another type where we saw that all the, all the different galvanized sheeting just came off the roof and uh, exposed the rafters and all the lats were on the ground. That speaks to, again, the, 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 the type of roof you have. And uh, I want to let, um, if you live in a country area, uh, and if you live in, in areas where you have a lot of wooden roofs, here's what, a lot of termites. Mm. And that's what we've discovered. A lot of termites are eating at the, at the, at the rafters. Yes. And you don't know because they're eating on the inside. When, when I was a young man, we used to see these um, rain flies. Rain flies are not uh, special creatures. <laughs> they are termites that, that take wings after the rain falls because the earth is saturated yes. and the termites come up and we see them flying all around. When you see that, know that they're in your roof. So, Mr. David, what you're suggesting is that even before the rainy season begins, what we should find ways to reinforce our structures and roofs and stuff like that? We need to do it now. I have always lamented the state of the housing stock in Trinidad. Um, not, only, not only houses built with, um, by, pe by persons who are socioeconomically challenged, and I understand that, uh, how, how difficult is, it is for them. I want to advise them, um, go to the National Commission for Self-Help and ask, seek for some health, help. Um, Habitat for Humanity will help. And uh, there are many people who really need the help eh? mm -hmm. because they have huge uh, um, bricks holding down the, the... Well, I was just about to ask us that because yes. I have, I have, I've, I've driven through some communities and I've seen the bricks on top of the galvanized or the stone on top of the galvanized. Yes. Is that enough or do we need more? That is not enough. And, um, and uh, those individuals need special help. Yeah. And I, I think um, it will require... Um, all of us to come, come together and, and help them, the state, our private institutions, uh, because we will only see the true impact of that um, when we are hit by um, something major. Mm -hmm. But not so. Last year, let me give you an example. We had 1,073 roofs blown off or partially blown off. I mean, and we didn't have a hurricane. Just sharp winds caused by tropical waves. So that apart from the wind blowing off the roofs, the winds are blowing the trees that are near the homes. That's another hazard you have there. You see the mango tree, the pomerac tree, the chenna tree that you love so much that's so near the, near the house? Mm -hmm. And uh, the earth is becoming saturated now with eight tropical waves having passed by and all that water, the trees are just top, toppling over and falling. So you have to look at that hazard also. Now, Mr. David, as we talk about these hazards, so there might be instances where somebody, for example, may need to go to a local shelter. Um, does the ministry have oversight over this, or this is strictly ODPM? No, this is the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government. That's, that's my ministry. Right. Uh, we have placed signage 
in 70 of the shelters. Now, during COVID, we had created COVID compliant shelters. Mm -hmm. That is shelters that have had all the COVID, uh, uh, anti-COVID requirements. Um, now that it's opened up a bit, Whereas we could have um, placed 50 persons in, in a shelter during COVID times, we can probably bring it up to more 100 now. Mm -hmm. And there are signage you will see throughout the country on these 70 um, uh, COVID compliant shelters, which meet requirements, we have now placed signage outside. And you will see it, and it will, it will say things like, uh, uh, walk with your grab and go bag. It will say the capacity of the shelter. It will say the current capacity. It will say shelter rules must be followed. So we have all of that being done uh, as we speak. And we have the shelters in all of the all of the regional corporations. All of the forty, all right. of the fourteen regional corporations. It's not we, and there are seventy of them that are COVID compliant. We have many more shelters, of course, but these have uh, the signage on them. Right now, I know that you mentioned that the um, the ministry partners with certain agencies such as um, TTFS and Team and that sort of thing. What is the response like in Tobago? Uh, I, I would prefer Alan to speak about that, eh? <laughs> but I know that uh, um, Tobago is well managed, yes. and uh, they have had. The thing about Tobago, they have a history of having been hit, and quite a f uh, many of the uh, population they are older now, um, or la about like my age, right. so they remember Flora, yes. and they, uh, so that they have this this keen, sharp uh, awareness. Of, of, um, of the effects of a hurricane. Mm. Not so in Trinidad. Many young people have never, all they have seen is uh, high winds. Oh, we've heard the stories oh, of Flora. Of, yes. I've heard the yes. stories. Yes. But having experienced it, no. Uh, I, am, I, I am one of those persons who say, um, until we are hit, we will, we will be complacent. It is not that I'm saying I want to be hit. I would love to not to be hit at all. But when we are impacted by, by a hurricane, or then uh, I was in Barbados many years ago when there was a hurricane. So I got to understand what a hurricane is. Mm. And uh, many trainees have not yes. experienced that. So what do we do? So if it is, and then there's the, the, I was telling you that the tropical wave has taught us well, or sharp winds, trees will fall, the earth will be saturated, so that with this particular tropical wave that is supposed to come by, I think it's from this afternoon, when, uh, when that happens, water will flow quicker now because it's no longer, uh, it, the, the earth is saturated. Right. Now that makes it a little more difficult. Now if it is that you live in a community, you must know where you live, know the vulnerabilities. If you live below the level of the road, the road is here, right. but your house is here. You're no, gonna you, you're going to get flood yeah. waters. Yeah. What do you do? Go to the regional corporations. We are well stocked with sand and sandbags. Now, this is not the panacea, key for all for flooding. Of course, yes. There are fundamental things that need to be done in a community and changes in the mindset of many community members. So you go and you backfill the yard. Oh, we love to do that. Backfill, and the water is not coming to your property anymore. Hey, it then leave the community. And even that water didn't leave the community. And Mr. David, I mean, what about those who build close to the riverbanks as well? And so when the rain falls and that water rises, I mean, they may be at risk as well. Very much so. And there are many persons who, um, who are built. Uh, when you look at some of the houses built on the banks of the Karani River, you wonder how people survive there. It, it's, it's tough. And, um, but once you, you are near those rivers, understand that you took the risk. If you took the risk, then you must put in the mitigation measures. Of course. You must have a plan if you have to evacuate where you go to a safer location. Mm. All right, because um, it is going to come because it is the rainy season. Uh, uh, we have two seasons, the dry season and the rainy season. Expect that. Get your sandbags from your regional corporation. That may help. Uh, the hurricane straps. When you're building now, you need to put in these hurricane straps. Mm. And uh, stop building this, the, 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 the roof with these huge eaves. Trinis love to build big eaves to cover the windows because they don't want the rain to blow into the home. Yeah. If you go to some of those countries that have been hit by hurricanes, Anguilla, Antigua, you notice the size of those eaves? 10 inches. Mm, at most. <laughs> at most, yes. 10 inches. Yes. Yes. In Anguilla, 
they don't even put in um, mm -hmm. um, corrugated iron roofs anymore. Mm -hmm. They concrete David, roofs. We only have a few more minutes, but I wanted to speak as well to the people who, when they see the floodwaters, they, they like to go and take a bath in it, or they like to drive their car through it. Ah. How, what is the effect on the car? What is the effect on the person? I mean, what, what can we tell them to prevent them from doing things like that? Six inches of, uh, of water, just six inches of water could could push an individual away. A foot of water could drive a car, could push a car away. So that's important that you don't do that. And you cannot tell where the road ends and where the, 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 the drain begins. Yeah. So it, it is important that you don't drive through those, those waters. Sometimes you must have a little patience and you may have to shelter where you are, shelter in place, and allow the water to go down. And uh, bathing in the water, mm, when I think about it, all I think of all these pathogens that are, that are in dirty water. You don't know the dog that died away up the street and is now coming down in that water. Uh, uh, chemicals by uh, people who are doing agriculture. All of that gets into the water. And, and I see it, and I've seen it. People make these, um, these they, 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 they makeshift surfboards and they're, and they're surfing, surfing in through it. that water. Some even go out with boats as well. Yes. Now, unfortunately, Mr. David, we're out of time, but quickly, if people need to get in contact with their regional corporations, um, is there a social media handle for the ministry, a website, any numbers you can share with us? Yes, yeah, um, there are 14 hotlines. I can't give you all the hotlines. <laughs> so course. there are 14 hotlines. You can go to the uh, web page of the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government and you will see all the numbers. Call the regional corporations. We will help. But remember this. We will help uh, when it is safe to so do. Yes. Because remember, you cannot help a victim by becoming a victim ourselves. <laughs> so we will come out and we will work and assist you. Yes. Tarpaulins, mattresses, sandbags, whatever, you need. whatever you need. Thank you so much, Mr. David, for joining us. I think the information was so important as we look out for that, um, that tropical wave that's going to hit us sometime this evening. So thank you for sharing the information. You're welcome. <laughs> and that was Mr. Jerry David, who is the Senior Disaster Management Coordinator at the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government. We have so much more on the Now Morning Show. Stay with us.